means it's up in the switches, be the key switch, tether switch, or the start stop switch. Wouldn't surprise me if it was this. All right, so um, that's good. Start. Uh, good to hear that thing again. It sounds awesome. So next thing I'm going to do now that I know it's in one of those switches, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to pull this console off. And then I'm just going to simply test each one of those. I'm going to test the um, key switch. So I'll take a multimeter, uh, just put it on continuity, and then test to see if the key switch has good continuity. And then I'll wiggle it a little bit to see if it's kind of breaking up. And then if that's good, I'll move on to the, um, the tether. And then I'll plug that in. The tether itself is kind of like broken up on the outside, the rubber part. So um, I don't know if it's just not holding well, but I'll do the same thing with that. I'll test it for continuity. I'll wiggle that plug a little bit and then go from there. And if not, if it's not either one of those, which I'm suspecting, the most common thing on these sleds is the emergency stop switch. So I'll do like I did on the 600 last winter, and I'll take that apart, clean it all up, and then I'll use some of that um, conductive carbon grease on there, and then that should solve all the problems. So get it figured out either way. Uh, yeah, so for now, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, these, you know, sometimes the stuff's a, you know, just a process of elimination, and you know, it'll give you attitude here and there, but you know, that's what it is with the older sleds. But you know, like I said, I went through this whole thing, and it's just working out the little kinks here and there. I think she's just about to the point where she could be reliable. So we'll be able to test it out this this uh, this winter. So I'm pretty excited. All right, so I got the console off here, and uh, I got these leads hooked up to the tether here. I got the red and white one, and then I got those hooked up to the leads on my multimeter. So if you hook it up to the ohms, it's showing that it's got continuity. And now I'm going to wiggle it. You can hear the, the beeping going off. That means it's got connection. And that should be okay. All right, now we're going to try the key switch. <clears throat> so now I got the key switch terminals hooked up to the multimeter. All right, so we got continuity. When I wiggle it like this, it, it does kind of seem like it affects the the beeping. So I don't think that that would do it though. Let's test the uh, the switch here. All right. So the next one we're going to test is the emergency shutoff switch, safety switch. Okay, we're good there. Uh, I believe it's this one. And the thing is, is I'm using I don't, the the throttle safety switch doesn't even work because I'm not using that. I'm not using this with the correct harness. So I mean, at least the the main harness, which isn't that big of a deal because it's I'm just all I did is just wired all the the, the switches to where they'll work with the open ignition harness, main harness on this. And it's they're not really much different. It's just there was a I think one wire that I had to switch. So I couldn't find a, har a main harness for a 95 ZR700, so I just went with a 99 ZR700. That's open ignition instead of closed ignition, but I did get it all to work. Oh, that's great. Cheap junk. Let me grab something. Connect this here. We got our multimeter on. Okay, so that's hooked up to the safety switch. We're gonna turn the safety switch off. We're gonna connect these leads up. There should be no continuity at this point. Huh. So that seems to be working fine too. So we could just have a bad connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up all the connections 
and uh, I'll put a little bit of this carbon conductive grease on there. This has been working real well for me. So I'll tighten up the connections, put a little carbon conductive grease, and should be good to go. Okay, so all I do, which I've already done, is just take a pair of needle nose, and then I'll just kind of crimp this closed. I did that on both sides. And then you take your carbon conductive grease here, and you can fill that hole a little bit, but also get the, the mail post. And it doesn't have to be a crazy amount. It's just enough to keep a connection there. You can coat the whole thing so there's no corrosion ever, but nothing crazy. And then I like to just take this stuff and just dip it right in there. And get it nice and slimy. And then do the same thing to the other side here. And so once I've crimped both of these and then coated the mail posts enough, with this carbon conductive grease, you just go ahead and put them back together. You, um, what I have done before is uh, once they're together, you can either use something like any silicone, really. Just make sure all this stuff is clean on the outside once you put them together. I'll show you. All right, so once they're together like this, you can sm clean this off with like carb cleaner. And then right on this seal, this edge all the way around and then on the other side, you can smear some silicone or, you know, Permatex one minute gasket maker. That stuff's real good. Um, and then that will seal that up. You might have to pack it in a little or you can rub it right on the edge before you push it down. And then uh, that'll seal all the moisture out. You got the carbon conductive grease and that'll pretty much set you for eternity on these things. At least, you know, for the plugs. Okay, and then as far as these right here, you can just take a little sandpaper, clean them up a little. And you can see there's a little bit of stuff that comes off of those. And then uh, these right here, you'll have one. You can pretty much just tighten them up. One of these goes into the ignition and the other one goes into the tether. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these out actually. Usually you can just take one of these little screwdrivers here and stick it in there. But I got a couple variations of things I can use. We'll get a smaller ones in there, see if that works. See, what you're doing is you're pushing down on this little tab here. And you just squeeze these. That tightens up. That tightens up the connection. Then you'll want to make sure this tab is out. Just like that. And you don't want to squeeze them so tight that you can't get them back in. Just snug them up. And then get your trusty goop out. Carbon conductive goop. Oh yeah, it's nice and tight now. All right. All right, let's clean all this up and see if she starts up. 
Okay, I got everything connected back up, wiring harness to the stator, and let's see if she'll fire up. So now I'm wondering if it's the wiring harness. All right, guys. So check this out. This is weird. Um, when I started it, the thumb warmer and the hand warmers were on. And listen what it does. That's me switching the, hand, the thumb warmer off. The hand warmers off. So I think I got a short in my hand warmer and thumb warmer switches somewhere. So I'm gonna dig into that real quick. I'll let you know what I find if I find anything. All right, guys. So after looking through the service manual. I'm thinking this might be my problem, or one of the problems, who knows. So the service manual says when you start the sled up, you connect the red wire to a, or the red lead on the ohm or voltage meter, set it to AC, red wire, red lead to the yellow wire, and the black lead to the brown wire on the wiring harness, and you should get 11 to 13 volts. Well, I was getting like high nines to low tens, and so if the regulator wasn't putting out enough voltage and whenever I would, it would kind of make sense that when I would turn on my hand warmers that it would start messing things up. So um, I don't know if it would try and pull power from the ignition system or something. I don't know how it's wired up to where it would do something like that. But either way, I have another one. I'm going to hook that up. Uh, I'm getting ready to install that now and then I'm gonna fire it up and test the hand warmers and again after that Okay, so let's go ahead and test this voltage See what we got here. So I'm gonna set this up didn't change because I switched the high setting on for the hand warmers and it started putzing again like it was running wanting to run on one cylinder so that wasn't it I mean it almost seems like it's wiring somewhere so I'm gonna keep digging all right check this out this is the heating element for the hand warmers the switch is on the other one's plugged in
I do not get it, guys. Ah, uh, this is a frustrating one. We're gonna figure it out, though. We'll figure it out. Okay, so just to give you guys a update here on uh, what I went through off camera, um, I started unplugging. I went through and checked, you know, a bunch of different stuff and um, fixed uh, some connections here. I tightened up all the connections down there, and everything's good. Like I said, it's um, it's somewhere in these switches or the heating elements. Well. Uh, I started unplugging elements, and whenever I would unplug one of the elements with them on, even on high, like I was showing you in the last portion of the video, that uh, the engine would start running fine. So that got me thinking, and I went to the service manual and started uh, looking under how to test the heating elements. Well, I tested both of the heating elements for the hand warmers, and those are supposed to be uh, 8 ohms and uh, 14 ohms and then the thumb warmer is supposed to be 4 ohms and 12 ohms well the both the hand warmers are good and the thumb warmer actually was registering at like 12 and 14 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and pull a thumb warmer off of another sled that um, it was actually an older sled that got wrecked and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of I'm going to make sure that it's got the correct ohms, and then um, I'm going to plug that in, and then fire up the sled and see how it acts with um, that thumb warmer on there, and then go from there. Because if I have the uh, the, th the thumb warmer unplugged, there's no problems. I can turn the hand warmers on high or low, and there's no change in behavior of the engine like there is if I have this one. So. If that is it, then it's this thumb warmer is bad. Clearly, it's bad because of what the readings are, and it's just putting too much of a current draw on the engine. I guess I'm not exactly sure. I mean, from my electrical knowledge, that would make it seem like it's pulling uh, too much current from the stator, and then that's just that's putting a back feed. It's called back EMF on the stator more than it's designed to have. And that's what's causing problems, or it's just going through the electrical system, uh, you know, jumping across the ignition system. I don't know exactly how that works, you know, as far as uh, the way they have these system, the the this uh, electrical system. So, how, or how they have the electrical system working in conjunction with the ignition system. And I know, obviously, you can unplug the four prong plug down there to the stator, and then jump the two uh, non yellow wires, and bypass all these switches, but. So there's got to be something involved there, you know. Obviously, all these the power comes from the stator, but I always thought that the, I mean, obviously the stator and the ignition system are separate, but they are on one unit on the engine. So I don't know if it was just causing some type of interference because there's too much current draw or what the situation is. But either way, I guess I don't really have to know exactly how that works, although it would be nice. But um, if I put the new one on there or the, another one and it's, you know, testing fine, plug it in and then everything runs right. That definitely was a problem. So I'm going to get that done real quick, pull the other one off and put it on here. I don't even have to hook it up other than just plugging it in and it'll be fine. So, all right, let me go get that thing and we'll put it on and see what happens. Okay. So this is what's coming down to is that I checked the wattages for each of the stators and the 95ZR, 99ZR700 stator, which is for this chassis, this chassis has all the electrical on it still, including the, the hood harness, the main harness, all the, uh, the switch for the heaters and the heating elements. And that stator for the 99ZR700 is actually 12 volts at 200 watts. And so the 95ZR700 engine for the ZR1 chassis is actually only 150 watts. So I think really to be able to get rid of my problem, I would have to have the bigger stator. Um, I mean, I guess I could have somebody rewind this and go from there. I'd probably have to pay for the electric or for the uh, lighting coil to get rewound, but it's either that or I switch over to the old handlebars and I don't know, maybe put the uh, these switches back on there. The switches that I got right here, like uh, the throttle and whatever else, just put these two back on there, but change out the thumb throttle 
and then the uh, the hand grips would have the old ZR1 heating elements in there and then just connect it all up. But I mean, even at that, it's like, well, I got two different types of switches here, so it'd be a lot more compli I mean, wouldn't really be compli complicated if I just ended up getting the, the correct handlebars that would have the switches and the elements, and then I just plug it into the existing wiring harness. Or I could switch the, Z the open ignition wiring harness to the closed ignition, but then I'd have to get that. And so really the easy fix is just to, um, I could probably even plug it in and then just not use the thumb warmer and the hand warmers at the same time. So that's what I'm going to do for now. The engine should run fine as long as I don't do that. So I'm going to put it all back together real quick and then we'll fire it up and make sure everything's good to go. And if, if it's good to go, then I'm just going to button it up and stick in the sled and call it a day for now because I got other stuff to go get taken care of. So I got a dirt bike that needs to come in and I got to rebuild the shocks or the shock and the forks on that. So I'll do this off camera real quick and we'll come back, fire it up, do the quick test with everything plugged in and then go from there. All right. All right, so I get everything back together. I did not change the th uh, thumb throttle. Um, I left everything basically the way it was. If I don't have these on, this is what it comes down to for now. If I don't have these on at the same time, it seems to run fine. And if I wanted to really change things up and make it right, I would either have to go to like a fully open ignition system or use the closed ignition chassis handlebars and heaters or get my lighting coil either rewound or I could swap the lighting coil on my stator for a later model that is the same design but it's just got higher wattages like there's some that are 175 185 and 200 210 215 so if I could find one of those that might be another way to do it but for now uh, everything's fine. This thing's ready to go. I'll show you guys that it'll start up no problem. guys so that's it you can see uh those pistons worked great uh engine sounds awesome obviously you know there's still a little bit of an issue with the uh the heaters there but not a big deal like i just showed you you know if i put them both on at the same time it will have an effect on the engine for some reason i'm still looking into that i mean the only thing i can think of is that it's like it's creating too much draw on the lighting coil and maybe that's just creating too much uh back EF or back EMF electromagnetic field which is like a generator term so for now I'm just gonna you know leave it like this and uh, see if I can figure something else out later and then I just won't put put the hand warmers and the thumb warmer on at the same time so not a big deal but thanks guys for sticking around for the video I know it was kind of a long one uh, a lot of different stuff that I did but I hope you found some useful tips in there if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel hit the subscribe button and the alert bell that way you can come on back and check out what we got going on always fixing a ride something here like I always said uh, check us out on Instagram as well I usually post things daily uh, but definitely more than what I do on the channel here just you know if it's pictures or um, you know stuff that I got going on little progress things so check that out as well so all right guys thanks for stopping by we'll see you in the next video so take care God bless see you next time.